Halloween is behind us and we're slowly approaching Thanksgiving. What that means is the water temperatures are continuing to plummet as we get closer and closer to the dog days of winter. Fish change their behaviors. They're no longer pushing bait in the back of pockets and they're slowly starting to think about getting to those wintertime haunts. In the fall, the fluke was a fantastic bait to be able to track down those fish as they busted schools of shad. Or if you were in the smallmouth infested rivers, smallmouth were eager to chase down a quick, fast moving offering. But now, those fish are really thinking about getting into those wintertime haunts. But that doesn't mean you need to put the fluke away. We just need to adapt to the conditions and how we fish it. So today I'm giving you three tips on how to continue to make the fluke a very powerful asset in our arsenal as old man winter approaches. Number three is you're gonna put it on a tiny, tiny jig head. I don't care what jig head you use. It, most jig heads will work perfectly as long as it has a sticky sharp hook and you can get it with a line tie that is horizontal. Now, I prefer the guppy style head from Dirty Jigs, but again, you can use whatever you want. The reason you want this sticky sharp hook is those fish are gonna be extremely light biters. And because of the cold water, a bass's mouth gets harder. And so it's a lot, you need a, a really, really thin sticky sharp hook to be able to really get them embedded in the mouth. Secondly, generally speaking in the fall, in, the, in that winter time, the fish don't bite very hard. And so what you're gonna be feeling on the end of your line is just pressure. And that fish will suck it in and spit it out extremely quickly. So make sure you get that sticky sharp hook to help with that. Now when it comes to the line tie, the reason you want it at that horizontal position is so when you're vertically jigging line, just like a Daniki rig, keeping it at that vertical line tie will keep that bait perfectly suspended in the water column like that. Now, one other thing with this, go with a tiny fluke junior like this one here or you can go with a junior size. So the, either the tiny fluke or the junior size, depending on the size of the bait fish that are in your fishery. Number two is adding a stinger hook to a fluke. Now we've talked about this a little bit in other videos, but I never really got into detail of how. I wanna save you guys a lot of money here. And so this is a tip that you're probably gonna get nowhere else. You can buy little plastic rings that cost a lot of money to be able to put a trailer hook. But I'm gonna show you a really simple way to do it that's gonna save you a lot of money. Go to your local Walmart or any or a craft store, pretty much anywhere, and you're gonna buy a hole punch just like this. Take an old water bottle or an old plastic Coke can or milk jug. You can put that on there right there, like that, and boom, just like that. I have a perfect ring of plastic to be able to put on my bait. Plastic to use in the winter time, because again, when those fish are down there deep, they're not gonna always take the bait well. And keeping that trailer hook on top of the bait, it does increase your hookup percentage, also really reduces the chance of you gut hooking fish. Number one, my number one adjustment that you can make to your fluke this winter is to attach a blade. Now the blade I like to use is a Keith Poche Humdinger, and you can get it in many, many colors. You can get it in gold, silver, painted, willow leaf, Colorado. Generally speaking, you're one I'm gonna go with the gold or the silver one, depending on your water clarity. If you have really, really clear water, I would go with the silver one. Screw lock, all you have to do, put it at the head of the bait like that, boom, into an underspin, just like that. Isn't that crazy? So with one bait set up, I can keep a couple of these blades in my pocket and I can quickly adjust the condition. It's like a Swiss army knife. I can take out one rod and I can take a bait and present it two different ways. If the fish are super lethargic, I'll take the blade off and I'll get it over top of them and I'll jig it. If, they are, if they're a little more active and I think I can get them to chase, I just tie on that blade and then I can just slowly reel it through the school of fish. Guys, I really hope that helped. Talk to you next time.